RDTR has just been released some time ago and it's actually like a very good update detection model and they're also adding support for instance segmentation. This is a fully open source model that you can use directly out of the box from Roboflow. This one here, we're gonna take a look at both how we can use the model, but also how we can train it on a custom data set. Later on, I'm going to cover how we can use the segmentation model of it, how we can do benchmarking, test it out, do comparisons with the YOLO models and all the other update detection and instant segmentation models out there. So let's just jump straight into it. I've started inside the RFDTR GitHub repository. It's just a few months and few weeks old. They're making updates to the model all the time. The segmentation model is still in preview when I'm recording this video, but we can still use it. So for example here, let's just go down and take a look at some of the benchmarks. So we're comparing it with the older, this is a transformer based model where the YOLO models, they are convolutional neural networks. So it's CNN based. You probably know the RT DTR, there's like the R LV, DTR, Define model, and so on. Those models are also based on a transformer architecture, just as the large language models. But now we have this RF DTR model. And as we can see in purple, it's significantly better compared to the other ones when we're looking at the MS Coco data set. The latency here is also looking pretty good, especially if you compare it to the YOLO 11 model. We have YOLO 26 just around the corner as well. So very exciting to test that one out, see how it performs both compared to the YOLO 11 model, but also the new RFDTR model. So around the same inference speed, but we get better performance on the MS Coco data set. So we can see there are some different variations. We have nano, small, medium for RFDTR as well. Pretty good mean error position or the error position for the Coco data set. Here we can see the RoboFlow 100 benchmark data set that they're using as well. Pretty good performance. We have the latency, so we have lower latency as well. One thing to notice here is that they use lower resolution compared to the CNN-based images, but also the other models that they're benchmarking against where they have similar latency and also better accuracy or on par accuracy. So they're actually like able, probably with the transformer base, with the tension egg mechanism and all that, it's a bit more heavy, but it can also catch more detail. So that's probably why they can go on lower resolution and get similar performance. It's a bit heavier architecture to run, so that's why the latency is lower because the model itself is is higher uh, is is hard to run or takes more processing power to run. Um, so we can't process as big images. For example, if we just take like a similar performance, if you just take these two models or the medium or a large one, we can see we have 4.5. And then here we have, for example, 2.5, 3.5, here we have five. But again, the performance we get out of it here, just here on the benchmark is pretty awesome. They also have the instant segmentation model, basically just beats the model, all the models available out there. And this is fully open source. So let's basically just jump straight into it. We have a GitHub repository that we're going to go through. I'm going to show you how we set up. This is all available from RoboFlow. Everything will be down in the description as well. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to go through it step by step. First of all, we can set up our RoboFlow API key. I have it here. You can just set up your API keys in a Google Colab notebook. You have the free GPU resource available. So it's a pretty good environment to train on. So we have access to a RoboFlow API key. We can then go in and load it. It's going to run it. We have connected to our runtime. We're going to check if we have available CUDA GPU. There we go. We have a Tesla T4. So this is the free one on Google Colab. What we're going to do now is now install RFDTR. I can probably just delete this part so we install the newest version. I think it's 1.3 where they have the segmentation model as well. We can download some image examples. This appears from RoboFlow that we can pass through, see how we can run our inference with our model. So basically just we load our image. We load our model here, we specify the resolution that we want to run at, we can optimize for inference, we want to run our prediction step, we get our detections, then we can use supervision to do all the visualizations for our bounding boxes, label annotator, convert the labels from the Coco classes, we have the class indexes and the IDs, and then we're basically just annotating our image and displaying it. So that's pretty easy to run. You can just run it, you will get the examples, you can throw in your own image and you will do the detections. But what we're going to focus on is how do we act like train our custom model. So this is the format that they're using. They're just using the Coco format, pretty standard format out of the box. 
So when you download your data set from Roveflow, I have tons of videos on the channel already covering how we can label our data set on Roveflow, other different types of platform as well, how we can export into different formats. And then we just need to copy paste it in here. So if you go to Roveflow, you'll just get your URL, drop it in here. We can from Roveflow download our data set in the Cocoa format. If you want to use YOLO, you can specify YOLO 11 format here and it's going to download it in that format instead. So we're going to download from Roveflow to have a public available data set here with basketball player detections. So let's grab our data set. It's going to load the workspace, our project, and it will download everything automatically. So it's basically just a few clicks that we need to do and we're good to go. In the left side, we have a basketball player test train and validation split. If you just take a test split, we have our Coco annotations file, and then we have all these different images of basketball. Let's close this one. One, let me uh, close it, close tab. Train RFD TR on a custom data set. So everything you have to do now is just take the RFD DTR media model. If you want to specify a specific resolution you want to train on, you can specify it here, or it's just gonna grab it from the data set that you're exporting. You can specify a number of epochs. This one here doesn't need as many epochs as the YOLO model, for example, but it's also significantly slower to run. So if you're just using it, like it depends on the batch size as well. So the batch size, basically just depending on your hardware, set it to two or four, you can have the grad accumulation steps. So you basically for your batch size, you need to multiply these two values. So let's say that you have a bad size of two and a grad accumulation step of two, it's gonna pass in four images. So make sure that that fits within your RAM. We should be able to go with a bad size of four in this example, and we should be good to go. If you have better GPUs, you can go to 16, eight or 16 or something. Let's just go small for now. So it's definitely gonna take longer to train this model, probably two, three to four times longer than the YOLO models, but at the end of the day, we just need to hit it here in a Google Colab notebook, let it run, and that's it. So here, we're just going to download the model. We're going to start the training. We will get all the training outputs where we have the output metrics that we can plot. We can grab the model weights, create a new instance where we can just load the model. So I'm going to show you this in a second, but we can just set pre-trained weights. We just set that equal to the path and it's going to load that pre-trained model that we have. So now it's setting up everything here with our weights. It's setting up the optimizer, the data loaders, everything. And now it has started the training with the epochs. So while the model is training, I'll show you here another tool that I have used to basically just generate research papers, reports, if you're doing personal research yourself and so on, or just want to write something for a client, set something up. Here we have a full PDF file report written in LaTeX with an AI agent from SciSpace, transform negative architecture, a comprehensive research survey. So the tool that I'm using is basically just this one here. It has an AI detector as well. So after you have written something, you have drafted something with AI, you can drop it in here, get an AI detection. This is actually like on the original attention is all you need. So this is before all the large language models generators out there. So it's moderately human, 21% AI. It will flag every sentence. So you can go in and see the exact sentence, which is highly, high likely. AI generated. You can go in and paraphrase your text, change the tone and also the writing style. So use this tool here if you're doing any scientific writing, but you can also generate basically just reports and drafts that you can use. Another tool that I've tried here is basically just a transformer network architecture to generate the news. So another tool here is to use the size. So another tool to use is the size based agent. So this is a so another tool to use is the size base agent. This is the tool that I use to generate the full research report on 60 pages to start with. So I basically just inputted research the topic of the transformer network architecture and I want it out as a LaTeX manuscript. It went through everything, wrote all the LaTeX code and then the output file is pretty much at the end. So we can see the output, we have a folder structure so you can view the documents directly. It generates a markdown file with all the context and then it generates this LaTeX file. So now we have a full research report. We can drop it into the AI detector, go back and forth. We can do research, technical writing, documentation significantly faster now with this tool. So after a little break, while generating your research paper report, let's jump back into the training again. We're almost done. I just set it to five epochs since it takes like eight, 10 minutes for every single epoch. You probably need to run between 10 and 20 epochs if you're running on a decent amount of data. So once that is done, we can actually go over into our output directory. We have our eval, so we have a latest model and we also have the first model running. We have the checkpoints for the best models 
for the mean error positions and the different metrics that we are tracking. At the end, we will also get our metrics plot and everything that we need. One thing that you can do in the notebook as well, you can deploy the train model directly to Roboflow. You can use your API key, your project ID and workspace, just upload it there. We won't do that for now. And then you can also evaluate the fine-tuned RFD ETR model, pretty much just looking at CUDA, benchmarking in it, how much RAM and so on is it using. You can clean up the GPU memory, but the most important part is how do we run the inference. So as I said in the start, we just need our pre-trained weights. We grab our content output checkpoint best total. So it do doesn't have that yet before it is actually like done training. But if you want to take a checkpoint, you can grab that, either copy the path, or you can also just hit download here and it will download to your computer and you can run this code here on your local environment and then you can run inference wherever you want. So once done training, we just run it here. We use supervision to set up our detections. So the detections that we're going to get out right now, we're just going to set up our data set. So this will be for our test set. So we're passing that through, running a test set through doing inference and that. So that's images the model hasn't seen before, never trained on to see how well it generalizes. Everything that we need is just to take TQDM, it just runs through all our data sets. So just run through all individual ones, we get the path of the image, we get the image itself, and we also get the annotations so we can draw it. We're gonna open the image path. We have our detections, so we just predict on our image. We set a threshold of zero, so we just get all detections to see what are we act like detecting. Let's just set it to point one. So now we can see we act like got our total, so that means our model has finished training up here. So yeah, results saved, has been saved here. We get the results, and now it's just doing the final evaluation. Now we got our metrics plot. Two. So we'll see, might need to just close it and open it again. There we go, we have our metric plot. Let's take a look at it. We definitely haven't converged yet, so we can see that it's still going up. We get some accuracy, we actually get a pretty good accuracy here, even after just four iterations. Like this is pretty fairly high mean um, average position that we get. But of course it hasn't converged yet, but you don't need more than maybe 10, 20 epochs in total. You can start with 10, you can always just load in the pre-turn weights and continue the training of the model. So what we're going to do now is basically just use the model. We hit go, it's going to load the model, we can set up our data set. So now we just load our model, we have our detection data set, let's set that up, it will take care of the rest. We're going to run our predictions, we just append our targets and our predictions, so we have our annotations and detections and we can then just do a comparison side by side with the two examples. So here we can see that the image is not defined. Let me just see where that is. So we need to see where is that coming from. It's actually coming from this one here. So we didn't plot this one. So from PLL, it's gonna import image. You can just directly plot it right now. And now we'll have access to our image. There we go. It's gonna run all the inference steps with our TQDM. So we get our progress bar. 169 images, there we go. Now we can take the mean error position, update it with our results. We have, we have our targets and our predictions. We just compute the differences and here we can see the evaluations at the end. Now we can just run the inference. We take a single example. So we just take the first zero of the index, the first example in our data set. We predict with it. Let's just set it to 0.1 or 0.2 have our box annotator, label annotator, we have our annotation labels, detection labels, and then we just do a side-by-side -side plot here. So we just plot image grid with supervision. Every time you want to do any visualizations, detections, outputs, and so on, just use supervision. It's very easy to use. Even if you're using the YOLO model, you can just load them into the supervision detections from the YOLO format. <clears throat> and now we can see we have our annotations, and this is the detections. So we get a referee, we get a number, we get player, like just skimming over it, it pretty much looks like we get all the detections. We get a referee here, it's a lower confidence score, so we could just fill it out if we had the 0.5 confidence, which is the wrong one for our referee. So what you would do, just change the confidence, we can rerun it, and then it's pretty much just gonna remove this guy. We have the rim, we have the ball, we have a referee here in the background, so we pretty much have the exact same detections. You can Get the, get the model that you have uploaded, deployed to Rowflow. You can do it in the exact same way here. We can just probably just run it. So we have the model ID. We need inference. GPU, we take the dataset API. This is the model ID that you can extract. So after you have deployed it, 
upload it to Rowflow, you can download it again and use it in friends on your own local machine. And it, it is doing the exact same thing. So now it's using infer instead of predict, but at the end we get the exact same results and we just do a side by side comparison. So still downloading, you can go up here again, change the serif index to uh, one and we will get another image right, right now the other thing is executing so we have to wait until this is downloaded it will pull the model and then it will run the prediction on the other image and then at the end we can see a comparison view from our deployed model so this is pretty much everything that you have to do label your data set use auth annotation use data sets available from roboflow to have the U roboflow universe we have videos covering everything on the channel Drop it in here, click a few times, go grab a coffee, make some research papers, whatever you want to do while you're waiting on the model training. Probably take an hour, two hours, and you have a very good model. Then you can use it in your applications and projects. So still building here. Just wait here until it's done. We're building it with GPU inference access as well. We should probably just have gone with CPU. There we go. It's done. We run our inference with the model that we are downloading. We can go up here. This is another detection. So we have a ball detected. We have players, rim, referee, and you can just go through all the different examples that you have in your data set. Let's take the fifth index. So now we can see players are moving. We still pretty much get the detections. Let's scroll down and take a look at the side by side comparison. Exact same results that we get. This is with the two ways that you can do it directly with the checkpoints, or you can download them from Roboflow. You can use both. Hope you're enjoying this video here, guys. Definitely go and check it out. Fully open source, very good update section models, also segmentation model. We're going to do way more benchmarking how fast this is. Now we just know how to train it. And whole nother world is how can we run in friends? How can we optimize the tensor RT optimization? How does it compare with the YOLO models and all that? Stay tuned for that. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.